Welcome to Currently Kirkland. I'm Pam Jardine. Kirkland was recently voted as the fifth best place to live in America by Money Magazine. Not a surprise to those of us who have experienced all the city has to offer. Our waterfront parks offer scenic views, the downtown area is lined with successful businesses, and families boast over the local school district and job opportunities. However, all of this popularity does come with a price. You may have noticed traffic congestion in and around the city. Well, so have we. City officials have recently drafted the Transportation Master Plan, which aims to improve your commute around Kirkland. One of the proposed solutions in the plan is to make our streets more pedestrian and bike friendly so that people of all ages and abilities will feel comfortable getting around on two wheels instead of four. Although not everyone can bike to school, to work, or to run errands, these Kirkland residents use their bikes for a variety of purposes and explain why more people should consider it. Well, I feel better when I get to work. I feel energized and um, it's a great way to stay in shape. Uh, saves a little bit of money on gas and wear and tear on the car. And, but the bottom line is I feel better when I bike. Now, not everyone feels confident riding on busy streets, so the city has implemented a few projects that will increase Kirkland's bike-friendly factor, including the development of the Cross Kirkland Corridor. The trail will connect pedestrians and bikers to eight of Kirkland's 13 neighborhoods. It will also link to Bellevue, Seattle, and Redmond. Rodney Rutherford, South Rose Hill resident, shares his excitement for the Cross Kirkland Corridor. I have a lot of hope for the Cross Kirkland Corridor in terms of just social community development. And the bicycle is uh, the way that I see it all becoming connected. One of the first things I hope we, we see on the Cross Kirkland Corridor is bike share. So even if you didn't bring your own bike, you could still go to a bike share station, pick up a bike and go to wherever you need to go along the corridor. The other thing I think I'm really looking forward to is ways that we can connect neighborhoods to the corridor. Uh, and that's where a lot of the greenways comes in. You know, the corridor will be our, our great uh, bicycle highway. Greenways are another way the city plans on making Kirkland more accessible to cyclists and pedestrians of all ages and abilities. Emily Ellers with the Seattle Department of Transportation explains what it means to have a greenway in your community. Neighbor greenways get you where they want to go on a safer, calmer facility. So we lower the speed limit to 20 miles an hour, and then we reinforce that speed limit with speed humps about one a block. And we find that by creating a calmer environment, we can attract more people to the greenway. And then we add signs and markings to let people know that they're on the greenway. And for me, the biggest benefit of neighborhood greenways are the improvements to busy streets. I think walking and biking is just fun. And one of the best things about neighborhood greenways is that we can provide a a connection for people who aren't currently walking and biking at relatively low cost. I think it's a win-win. We don't really remove parking. We don't create a car-free zone. As you can see, there's still people driving, walking and biking on the street. And so it's a way to create another travel option at a relatively low cost. Many local families have already begun traveling on the proposed greenways. They choose a new neighborhood every month to ride to local business, where they eat, drink, and socialize together. Glenn Bowman, one of the founders of Kirkland Greenways, tells us more. So a neighborhood greenway is just a, a residential street. It's a street that already has not a lot of traffic. The traffic that's there is going slow. It's a safe place that you could ride with young kids and not have to worry about them getting hit by cars that are going 35, 40 miles an hour. So it's, it's not the arterial streets like this one with bike lanes on the side. Those are great and we need those, but we also need a place for people who don't feel comfortable riding a bike here or, you know, it's kind of noisy to walk along these streets too. And so it's much nicer to be able to go through the neighborhood. In the past, people traveling in groups had trouble getting by areas where bollards were inserted to divert vehicle traffic. The bollards have now been removed by the city at bridges and other places throughout Kirkland in order to provide more room for bikers. Those traveling with a friend or pulling a trailer will now be able to travel the Northeast 80th Street and Northeast 60th Street bridges over I-405, among other places, more easily. The City Council has funded the Neighborhood Safety Program with the 2012 voter-approved street levy, an important step in creating safer roads for everyone. The program was created by the Kirkland Alliance of Neighborhoods and City staff in 2014, aiming to re-energize Kirkland's neighborhood associations. 
The program will bring residents together to identify and prioritize pedestrian and bicycle safety improvement, such as crosswalks, sidewalks, and traffic calming devices. The city has recently updated crosswalks and a physical divider along 84th Avenue Northeast on Finn Hill. John Paschal, a local resident, suggested this project through the Neighborhood Safety Program and was able to see his requests come to life. He is here to tell us more about the Neighborhood Safety Program. It's a really successful program. It was a pilot program in 2014. And I think what we saw from it was some really good ideas that came from the neighborhood. And um, it was a way to work and partner with the city to actually accomplish some things and show what the priorities were of, of, of each of the neighborhoods. Um, it also provided a mechanism or avenue for you know, people that just get frustrated because they don't know where to go. Like They have an idea, they see something that's needed, and then they just feel like their idea goes into some black box or you know, black hole, essentially, um, and never hear from anyone again. Well, here, you have an opportunity to work with your neighbors to actually put something forward. Um, you just ha it just takes, uh, you have to invest some of your time. Is there a road in your neighborhood that needs improvement? Go to the interactive map to suggest a project for the city to review. The Northeast 85th Street subarea plan envisions an 85th Street corridor with four and five story mixed use buildings that front on wide sidewalks. The City of Kirkland's Capital Improvement Program is currently laying the groundwork for this vision. Night crews are currently replacing the 50-year-old water main that runs along 85th and rebuilding its stormwater system. They will start building the sidewalks at the end of January and begin improving the street signals and street lights in February. By late next summer, they'll repave the road. Contracted work crews are nearing completion on a new connection between Slater Avenue Northeast and 124th Avenue Northeast. Northeast 120th Street will be open to traffic later in November, which is right on schedule. City leaders say the new road will reduce wait times at nearby intersections in the area. The city will be hosting a public celebration for its opening on November 19th. The proposed 2015-16 budget is now available on the city's website. According to the community survey the city conducts every two years, the majority of citizens continue to express that police, fire, and emergency medical services are their top priorities. Keeping this in mind, the budget currently aims to put money towards a new fire station, enhanced fire and emergency medical services in the Finn Hill and Juanita neighborhoods, and the purchase of two water rescue crafts. The City Council will be holding a public hearing on the budget and preliminary property tax levy on November 18th. Public comment can be given at the meetings by email or by mail. On another calendar note, the city is hosting a comprehensive plan update open house on November 12th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at City Hall. And on November 23rd, the annual turkey trot will take place at the Kirkland Marina. As always, thank you for watching Currently Kirkland. Remember, you can watch us on demand on the city's website, on your mobile devices, and on YouTube. If you have any news tips, suggestions, or comments, please send them to kirklandtv at kirklandwa.gov. We'd love to hear from you.